happening and thanks for the for, to the organizer to organizing this amazing conference. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, the human impact on species richness in assemblages. So when we think about biodiversity loss, we often think that species are um, going extinct locally because of human pressure and as a result that the species richness locally decreases. And some studies have shown that a case of systematic loss of species richness with increasing human pressure, but it's far from being the only trend that has been seen. Uh, many studies have um, shown species replacement. So the idea that some species are going extinct, but some species are colonizing. And as a result, we have a flat trend, no, no response of species richness uh, to human pressure. Some even say that if uh, colonization is faster than extinction locally, then you can have a peak of species richness at intermediate disturbance. And in some temporal study, they even found some systematic gain in species richness with increasing human pressure. And I came to this question during my PhD where I was working on protected area effectiveness. And in two independent studies, I found, uh, so one with the North America BBS, and one with eBird data across uh, tropical forests uh, globally, I found the same pattern that protected area did not have any effect on species richness, but uh, managed to protect some conservation concern species, for instance, specialist, endemic species, threatened species. So the idea that protected area did mitigate biotic homogenization, but didn't have any effect on species richness. And so that gives credit to the species replacement hypothesis. And I thought, can I see with my data, can I see this trend? And especially I was interested in looking if it was consistent across human pressure or if there was some kind of threshold. So I took back this EBOT data across uh, tropical forests and I looked at the relationship between species richness and human footprint. And what I've found is that indeed, up to a human footprint of 30, there is a really flat trend. So no response of species richness to human footprint, but it doesn't mean that the biodiversity is not affected. For instance, I see a clear replacement of forest dependent species. So the specialist of those habitats by non-forest species when a human footprint increases. And similarly, I see that endemic species decrease and large range species increase, threatened species decrease and are replaced by non-native non species and species that are highly sensitive to human pressure, to human, yeah, to human pressure, they are replaced by anthropophilic species. Um, so that gives, uh, yeah, uh, but above this threshold of 30, then it's not true anymore. And we have a decline in species richness and why that is, it's because most of those winner groups, so the one in orange um, on the right, uh, they are no longer benefit from the increasing human pressure and they start to decline. And so rather than just a species replacement, I suggest that there is first a replacement of species followed by a removal, uh, so a two-step trajectory, and that uh, it, these results, they give a good uh, illustration of uh, biotic homogenization, and they suggest that even if biotic homogenization is already bad, if human footprint keeps increasing, it can be much worse. Um, and to conclude, I would like to say that I don't believe that one of these uh, trajectories is true and should rule out the other one. I uh, rather believe that it depends on some uh, variables. Uh, the main one being the relative rate locally of extinction versus colonization. So if you have really fast extin extinction and slow colonization, then you will have a systematic decline, whatever happens. Uh, conversely, to have the replace then remove I presented or the species replacement, you need to have a really equate uh, extinction and colonization rate, which should be rare. And it's interesting that we see that often. And conversely, if you have really fast colonization, then you can have the intermediate disturbance or systematic increase. So together, those trajectory may help to understand uh, better the response of species richness and species in general to human pressure. Thank you very much. Thanks for, uh, to all the eBird data providers and the Cornell Lab for managing the, the database. And if we have time and you have some questions, I will be happy to answer.
Oh, thanks, Victor. It's a really cool talk. And uh, Thomas, I also had the same question with Thomas. Thomas asked, how did you measure human footprint? As, so I used the, the map of uh, Brooke Williams, who was published um, last year. And it's a map that uh, merged different uh, sources of human pressure. So there is the human density, croplands, uh, linear infrastructure, and several stuff that are combined to give a global, uh, globally consistent measure of uh, human pressure, human footprint. So they are combined into one measure, right? Yeah. The home yeah, exactly. Footprint. Okay, cool. And uh, the second question is from Adam. Uh, is there something special about footprint measures as certain such as it causes the decline? Uh, um, inside the, the human measures? Uh, yeah. Um, so it's because it's a combined measure, it's difficult to trace what is the driver inside. Um, so we would need to go with the different variables individually. Uh, but globally, what we can say is that this threshold of 30 is about when uh, landscape starts to be urbanized. So there seems to be um, uh, a threshold where you start to urbanize landscapes. That answers the question. Okay. Yeah. And uh, there's a more question on Slack. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.